All right, let's talk about the topic of entropy. Entropy has the symbol S, and a change in entropy is a delta S. It is a thermodynamic parameter. It is defined as the heat divided by the temperature. The symbol for heat is Q, so we often see it as a Q over T. The temperature has to be in Kelvin. It has units of energy, which are the units of heat, like joules or kilojoules, per degree Kelvin, uh, per Kelvin. And we will talk more about the numerical values a little later. What we want to do in this video is we want to talk sort of in generalities about can we look at a system and determine something about the entropy change for it. Uh, entropy is a state function, which means that a change in a state function is equal to some final value for it minus some initial value for it. We saw state functions back in our energy chapter in Chem 1. Um, enthalpy behaves the same way. We can calculate a delta H as some enthalpy for a final state minus an initial state. This allows us to do all sorts of calculations, again, which we'll get to, just uh, not yet. Um, instead of talking about absolute entropy values for systems, let's talk about what causes the change in entropy. Entropy is a measure of the randomness. We can say randomness or disorder of a system. It's, it's literally um, a measure of a number of ways to distribute things, like objects or particles or energy states. And so um, the more ways to distribute them, the, the, the more random the system is, the higher the numerical value for entropy. So if we're looking at something changing, if we're looking at a change in a system, we can kind of get gauge whether or not the entropy has increased or decreased, whether or not the, the products are have more entropy, the final state has more entropy or less entropy, based on what's happening. Um, one thing to talk about is in terms of a volume. Uh, back in the gas chapter, we talked about the fact that a gas will expand and diffuse throughout a container. Um, the process of a gas expanding, this process happens spontaneously. A gas will take up a larger volume, either diffusing throughout the container or even effusing through a pinhole into uh, uh, a container on the other side. Um, this happens spontaneously because as the gas expands, there is an increase in entropy. So if there is an increase in volume to the system, you're going to get an increase in your entropy, which means your change in entropy will be a positive numerical value. Um, in cases where there aren't volume changes, or maybe you're not dealing with gases, solids, and liquids, there are also some things that we can talk about um, would cause changes in entropies in a very predictable way. For example, if we look at temperatures. If the temperature changes for a system, an increase in temperature is going to give you an increase in entropy, an increase in the randomness. Uh, we learned earlier that temperature is, a, um, is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of the particles. The kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Higher temperatures, there's more movement. More movement, there's more randomness. So if you have a system that increases in temperature, you're talking about an increase in entropy. And by the way, I know it's obvious, a de decrease in volume would give you a negative delta S, a decrease in entropy change. A decrease in temperature would give you a negative delta S, a decrease in the entropy, uh, a negative delta S, a decrease in the entropy. Just said the same thing several times there. All right, let's get back to this idea of gases. If I have a solid particle, and it goes to the liquid state, like my melting ice cube, that is happening with an increase in entropy, as is if the liquid were to go on into the gas state. The delta S for this process would be positive. I would be looking at increasing entropy as a solid becomes a liquid becomes a gas. Again, the particles tend to get further apart. They tend to have more motion. I've just got an increase in entropy there. Um, if I'm looking at a chemical reaction, if I have A plus B going to C plus D plus E plus two Fs, all of a sudden on the product side, all other things being equal, I have more particles. More particles means there's going to be more randomness. I'm looking at an entropy change that is greater than zero, an increase in entropy. 
Um, so we have here several um, ways to predict entropy changes for systems. If you're given just a, a chemical reaction, for example, if it's happening at the same temperature in the same volume, those aren't going to affect the change in entropy. I would look first at whether or not solids are becoming liquids and gases. That's going to give you an increase in entropy. Um, and by and large, entropies of gases are huge compared to solids and liquids. And so this one is the big one. This, this kind of change, becoming a gas as the change proceeds, is, is going to outweigh any other things that are happening typically. And so we do, do tend to see huge positive in entropy changes if gases are formed. But let's say no gases are formed. I'm just dealing with solids and liquids then I might take a look at the number of particles. And the number of particles is going to give me an indication of whether or not the entropy is increasing or decreasing.